Hi everyone, Professor Bergesser here. Uh, in this video for looking at specs reduction, we're gonna look at a specific case of a extended source that's observed with specs. Um, this can happen when objects are big, like galaxies, and they are extended on the sky, or they vary nearby, like planets like Venus and Jupiter, where they are extended on the sky just because they're so close. Now, these are not point sources. We've mostly been focusing on point sources where we can subtract the A and B positions and get rid of that sky background. In many of these extended source cases, the source fills up so much of the slit that we actually have to observe off of the object to get a good measure of the sky. So we're gonna see an example here where we use a separate sky frame to subtract off that background. And we're gonna see a difference in how we uh, analyze extended sources versus point sources. And the example we're going to use today is an observation of Venus taken back in 2001. Uh, here is the log sheet for that in our uh, folder. I've already marked it up in, uh, by color. Um, and you can see this is from 2001, February 19th. And um, there's several different kinds of observations in this data set. But for the short XD mode, there is an observation early on of a star, nicely can be a labeled star. Uh, and I've looked this up in Sinbad and found out it is an A0 V star with these magnitudes. And this is going to serve as our calibrator. There's our uh, calibration frames, which I've already analyzed. And if I scroll down here, see the observations of Venus with the LXD mode. And here they come with the SXD mode. You can see a couple of things here. First of all, there's observation of Venus, but there's also observations of the sky near Venus. Uh, and again, this is a measure of what the background looks like without Venus in the way. Notice that all of these Venus observations all have the suffix A in them, which we've only been taken at one point on the slit. In fact, Venus is so big, it fills up the entire slit. So it's just centered on the slit and it's covering, it's, it's providing all the light that's going in there. But these Venus observations are interspersed by these sky frames. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to get an estimate of the sky using these alternating sky frames and then use that to subtract off the sky background for these other observations of Venus. So let's go into our guacamole setting here. And um, I will just show you that I've set up our folder uh, for the reductions, 2001 this one right here, a little bit close to that. And in there, I've also put in our CALS and PROC folders. So in my terminal, I'm gonna go ahead and CD into reductions, 2001 see those folders there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start up IDL and start up X specs tool. Now, as I mentioned, I've already done the calibrations frames for this. So we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead or, and just noting that our paths are okay. We're gonna go ahead and skip ahead and, and show the important pieces of doing the sky calibrations. And that's gonna come in when we combine the images. Uh, so that's a new mode we haven't looked at. So this is gonna actually take multiple images and kind of stack them together. And again, the idea here is that for the sky frames, we've taken observation of the sky, several observations of Venus, and then the sky again. Between the two skies, the sky has changed a little bit. In fact, it's gotten brighter because we're going closer and closer to the horizon as Venus sets. And so uh, we wanna take kind of an average of these two sky frames in order to get a good measurement of that. So I'm going to read in those images and I'm gonna select the file name read mode up here so that way, when I select these images, it's just going to read in by the file name. So here we can see our Sky 100, Sky 116. I'm holding the Shift key and clicking on both of those to read them both in. So you can see that nice list of files. And then everything else I'm just going to leave uh, as is. I'm not going to scale the orders or do any background subtraction. I'm going to save this into our Cal folder. I'm going to call this Sky 100 to 116 to indicate the range of frames that, that this incorporates. So we'll combine that up. It takes those two images, averages them, finds any outlier pixels. And here we go, here's our uh, sky frame. You can see there's quite a lot of structure in here. Some of it is actually left over from uh, a previous observation in a different mode, but uh, we're really trying to get rid of all these extra lines and bright background. Again, that's coming from the background sky. All right, now the other thing that's different is because we're looking at an extended source, we want to go to the extended source tab here. Uh, let me switch this back to index, and we're going to change our prefix to Venus because that's the prefix in the file name for our Venus files. I'm going to put in the first file there, number 101, bring in one of my previously analyzed flat field 
and wave cal frames. And then the only change I'm gonna make here is I'm gonna change this reduction mode from A minus B, which we've used so far, to A minus sky. And now that's opened up this uh, path and I'm going to click on this and the super sky, uh, sorry, sky frame, sky 100 to 116, that's the one that I just made. I'm gonna select that. And I'm going to load in this image. And what you should see is I have now the uh, raw image of Venus, the Venus spectrum. And again, Venus expands over this entire range. And I've subtracted off the background sky from that frame. Right? So it's not, not quite easy to tell in this, but uh, we've gotten rid of some of the extra structure that was back there. Now, Venus again is, is filling up the entire slit. And so to extract this, what we're really just going to do is we're going to uh, first click our make spatial profiles, and then we're just going to set the extraction position to be at the center. And you can see there's a little bit of slope across this uh, image, but it's not, not too terrible. So eight is, uh, well, maybe seven, seven and a half is somewhere in the middle of this. So I'll go ahead and choose that. Um, and then I'm going to keep all of my orders. Trace the object is just going to indicate the middle of the slit there. And then for the defining extraction parameters, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a healthy sort of range of spectra around the center point. So I'm going to set my aperture radius to be, oh, let's call it three. And I'm not going to do my background subtraction because I'm going to assume that we did that fine using our sky frame. And also the other reason is that we don't have any remaining background here because Venus covers the entire slit. So there's no background subtract to be done. If I show those apertures, it'll just indicate where I'm extracting my spectrum. Again, somewhere down the middle of the slit here. And then I'll go ahead and extract the spectrum. Now here's the plot that comes out. Now you'll notice that there's a few flagged pixels here, and that has to do with a little bit with how the extraction had to happen. And um, we will uh, kind of readdress these, and this is actually an issue in the reduction that we have to sort of figure out how to fix. But in any case, um, you can see that there's quite a lot of structure in here, and that structure again is coming from uh, a combination of, of the uh, the you know it's, it's a combination of the spectrum of Venus itself. And of course, the absorption of our own atmosphere, which we're going to correct at the x telecore stage. Now, once you've done that, you can, of course, extract the rest of your spectra. Um, and so if I go through here, let's just focus on this range here. Um, let's do 102 to, take a look again, to 115. And like our prism or our, our point source mode, we can just do do all steps. And it's going to go through and basically repeat the same calculation with all of the different uh, frames that are coming in here. So we'll give this a moment to finish and then we'll pick up again. Okay, we finished all the extraction. Now we're gonna combine some of these spectra together. So this actually is all gonna be exactly the same as we had for our point sources. And uh, just for illustration, I'm just gonna extract uh, a few of the first files. Let's do 101 to 104, uh, just to get a flavor of this. Um, so you can see you've got uh, these four spectra, they all look pretty similar. So like usually I'm going to select uh, one of these frames that's particularly bright, so maybe frame five to scale our spectra. See they line up pretty nicely. And um, on first glance, I don't really see much in the way to prune. So I'm going to go ahead and just correct the spectral shape, which we can do for uh, bright sources and that tightens things up pretty nicely. And we'll save this off as ComSpec 101 to 104. Now, I've already analyzed the Telluric standard, uh, which um, is uh, done exactly the same way we did for point source. So let me just bring up XTelcore. Uh, that Telluric standard was files 12 to 15. We'll bring in our files 101 through 104 here. And then I'm going to uh, get the B and V magnitudes, and those were stored in my log sheet, hopefully. So there we go, 5.78 and 5.8. Again, this is exactly the same as our point source extraction. So I will load the spectra. Now you get this error message because the error mass difference is quite significant. Um, the standard star was observed pretty close to overhead, and then the Venus was starting to observe it pretty close to the horizon. So we are going to get probably not a great Tiller correction, but at least there'll be something. Um, so we'll just go ahead and run our deconvolution. 
set our normal uh, regions for normalizing the continuum here. And again, you can take a look at the XTEL core uh, SXD uh, program to see how that was done. Zoom in on our line, select our region, construct our kernel. We're good. Scale lines, again, is exactly the same as we had for our uh, regular SXD reduction. Um, you're just going to go through and make sure that all these lines are properly corrected. Again, what we're just doing is adjusting the model that we use for our A star um, to adjust for the fact that it might have slightly different hydrogen line absorption. And you can hand adjust some of these if you want. And sometimes I grab one in the middle. This is a tough one because it's right near a telluric band. Uh, somewhere over here, I can adjust those and you get kind of a good smooth pattern here. And I jump on ahead to order seven. We see a few lines in here that definitely need some fixing. And I'm going a little fast and sloppy just because I know, you know, kind of remember what I'm supposed to be doing here and having done it many times. Um, so we'll just finish up these and just kind of smooth them out a little bit. And again, this is the great thing about having this little extra knob here is you can kind of smooth things down a little bit better than they were. And uh, we'll go to order eight and get a few of these paint ones. And I should say, as you're doing these reductions, you will find that the higher orders, uh, which are the shorter wavelengths, won't be corrected as well as the early orders because we're using a, a line at one order to correct all of the data. So it's not perfect, but at least it's a little bit better. All right, so we'll accept that and construct our total spectrum. And as usual, we want to get our shifts. So you can see that clearly there's a lot of toleric absorption around this region. So I'm going to go ahead and select that region and do an auto find. And good, we found a minimum. If I could just double check, I can click it again around that minimum value. Okay, that's good. And notice it's about minus one. So I'm going to actually start all of mine off with minus one, since that's probably a good estimate for all the other ones. And do an auto find around there. Oops, I forgot to select the region, but it seems to still do pretty well. Let's go ahead and specifically pick a region where there's a lot of strong telluric absorption to make that as good as possible. All right. And again, this is exactly the same steps that we follow for our regular SXD spectrum. Now, I'll notice something here is there's a big gap in our data. And part of that is because of the um, those replaced pixels that happen in the X, uh, X, uh, specs, text, X specs tool step. Um, and that's actually something that we still need to sort of figure out why it's replacing uh, those particular files, because that can that actually is removing some of the very useful data that might be in, uh, in our data set. Um, so that's actually going to be a note to our developers. All right, so we're getting close here. We are uh, almost at all of our orders properly line shifted. So hopefully this is just review. And we'll get our last one here. Now, this order is actually a little bit difficult because there's not a lot of toleric absorption. So in fact, I usually just kind of leave this be um, because this is a region where the, the toleric absorption is pretty weak. So now we just go ahead and name our file, which is going to be specs sxd underscore venus underscore the date 2001-0219 save our model and write our file, All right? So here's our spectrum. Again, we have some gaps in the data because of the replacement of pixels, but there's still plenty here to work with. And you'll notice that, um, again, the telluric absorption has been corrected, but there's still quite a few absorption features in the spectrum. And I will just note that, you know, for example, in this region uh, is where we often see uh, methane absorption in brown dwarfs. Uh, and we seem to see something very similar. Um, now, I'm not actually 100% sure it's methane, it may be other features. Remember that Venus has an atmosphere that's full of hydro, uh, hydrochloric, uh, sorry, uh, H2S, uh, sulfuric acid, uh, and other things. So uh, some of these features may correspond to other molecular uh, um, species that are specific to Venus. So here I might go and look up uh, a spectrum of Venus and see if I can identify some of these features. But in any case, this was the point was to kind of show how to work with the extended sources 
And again, the only changes you're going to make are going to be in that X specs tool stage. We're going to create a sky frame, and then you're going to use the extended tab, and then use the object minus sky extraction method uh, in order to reduce the data. After that is exactly the same as all the other methods. So good luck with your reductions, and uh, we'll uh, stay tuned for another video uh, to help you out with other aspects of reduction.